Hey guys, we got ourselves a new project. This is a Yamaha electric 48 volt golf cart. The uh, person that had it before had been having some issues with it. And of course, some of the issues are batteries, which is usually the case with a lot of the older carts. And she had already put two uh, new batteries in it. This requires six eight volt batteries. She's already replaced two and still was having problems. Uh, basically ended up selling it to me for the cost of the two new batteries that she already put into it. Um, so I pretty much got the cart, the two new batteries it came with. I'm going to need to get four more. It came with both the uh, high current charger as well as a trigger charger. One of the first things I did was wired in a bunch of regular car batteries just, just to get it pretty close to 48 volts just to see if everything worked and the motor was able to drive me around the driveway up and down a couple hills. It definitely runs. Uh, I did notice one additional problem is I did not ever hear this solenoid back here clicking. And from what I've read, that should click whenever you start to energize the motor with the pedal. And it should, when you let go of the pedal, it should then click back off. Uh, it looks like it disconnects the high current wires from, from the main control module, which has the big transistors that run the motor. So it could be that her batteries were draining down as a result of this relay not ever opening back up. I'm gonna check that here with a meter shortly. But the back axle had been slanted quite a bit to the one side. Once we got the body off, the cause was because this link bar right here had been bent into a, a really big horseshoe. Uh, so much so that the axle was pushed quite a bit over to the one side. Um, the only thing I can think of that would cause a, that to bend on these little guys would be like if you slid down an icy hill, got turned sideways and the rear axle slammed into something pretty solid. Um, don't know that that's what happened, but that's my best guess. Uh, but anyway, I was able to take a crowbar and straighten it out most of the way. It's not perfect, but it's close, a lot closer than it was. And the axle's now pretty close to where it needs to be. I think it'll work just fine where it is. I may tweak on it some more. But we do have a lot of rust damage. So most of it has to do with where the batteries were. I, I'm guessing there may have been some battery corrosion leakage at some point and rusted out our battery tray. So we're gonna brace that up a little bit. And the one other bad spot we had was this kick panel. You could almost put your foot right through it. In fact, I almost started to do that when I was going down one of the hills while I was test driving it. And I've already braced that up a little bit with some Unistrut from back here. So now we've got some structure again. This right here, it was pretty much all the metal was gone. Um, you could tell the way it used to be. If you look over on the passenger side, there was supposed to be a vertical brace or another vertical brace. And then this sidebar, which the, this side's not great but it's okay for now i think uh, this is just going to be a more of a toy project to kind of play around with it so what i want to do with this is i've i'm curious if we can put enough panels on this guy i'm thinking the canopy is i've got it off already it's back here so here's our canopy for it and i'm hoping to put at least three panels on this and i'm going to play with uh, some ideas and options to kind of see what configuration works best i might go with three 12 volts which doesn't get us as high enough voltage as we need for some charge controllers oh, I, though i did find there is a at least one charge controller out there that's supposed to be able to boost the voltage up which is uncommon usually if you're charging a 48 volt bank you need at least 48 volts um, input on your solar panels but not apparently with this one controller that i found so I'm either going to go that route or I'm going to have to go with smaller panels so that I can get enough of them on there to get the voltage over 48 volts. Uh, I'm going to do a little homework, try to figure out which way is going to be better to go on that. But what I think will be really neat to see is if we can actually use this around the property for chores, uh, doing weed whacking and pulling maybe like a yard trailer, that kind of stuff. Not going on big trips, but just the short occasional intermittent use around the property. I'd like to see if you can realistically use it without ever having to plug it in and charge it. I think that'd be really cool to find out. And I'm hoping that's gonna be the case. So a couple questions I'm hoping you guys can help me with. I think this is a G19, but I can't find the serial number to confirm that. Uh, here's what the plastics look like. This is the back one. It's been painted several times. Um, and there was also a golf cart tray that has been removed out of here. I have it over here actually. So there's the tray, the uh, back panel, and then the front looks like this. It looks like it's had a headlight 
The intern signal kit added at one point in time, but the wiring on that's all shot, none of it's working. And there was a decal on the back behind the seat, this is where your seat would sit, that normally gives you the year, but it's been painted, and of course their overspray covered up the model year. I'm thinking that this is a 2000s something G19, but I'm hoping maybe there's some Yamaha golf cart experts on there that can tell me what to look for to confirm that. And the next reason I'd like to know that is I would like to get a schematic for it. But step one is going to be fix the frames, paint it. Uh, we're going to try to abate the rust. And I'm going to use this product right here, Rust Cutter. I've used it before. It seems to work really well. It's just a spray. It sprays on real nice and uniform. I'll show you. Well, there it goes. So it gives a real nice mist and it saturates really good. And as that dries, it turns into a black primer that you can then paint directly. And it's actually a chemical process. It's chemically converting the rust. Rust and corrosion is a chemical reaction. So if we can eliminate the moisture and we can eliminate the oxygen, we can in theory stop the rust completely. I think I'm gonna clean up the body and kind of give it a nice paint job. It won't be like show car quality, but I'm pretty sure I can get it looking a whole lot better than it does right now. And I've got some extra old paint that I need to use up anyway. And got some new tires for it. The tires that came on it were pretty rough, pretty bald. I really thought it'd be nice to have something a little more tread to it, especially with the wet grass and hills and that kind of stuff that I'm planning to use it on. So I picked up these. These are the Carlisle Turf Savers. They're in the same size as the golf cart tires. They should go right on to the old wheels. So the first thing I want to do is check to see if this relay is in fact bad, like I suspect that it is. So I'm going to grab my multimeter. Uh, this is a Fluke uh, 77, but really any multimeter should work. You'll want to make sure your leads are in the volt ohm position and common. We're going to probably check first to see if this switch is welded shut. So right now there's no batteries in this. There's no voltage anywhere. Um, and the first thing we do is we turn on the meter to the ohm section. And the way these relays work is you apply a low voltage or low current rather across these small terminals, which then closes a switch through a big electromagnet that closes a big switch that then allows the big terminals to flow current. So it's basically these low voltage or low current low voltage wires can turn the switch on and off electrically. And usually when it does that, you'll hear a big clunk as it energizes and another clunk as it de-energizes. You're hearing those big contacts inside there close and open. So right now, if I connect my leads together, we make sure everything looks good there. We've got 0.2 ohms through the leads. That's pretty normal. And here, we're actually not getting a closed connection. I thought we would. I thought we would see a closed connection here. So. What that's telling me is that right now this switch is off and there's no way the motor can energize without this switch being closed. So either one of two things have happened. Either when I've been working on this and beating on it and taking it apart, I may have managed to rattle it around enough for that relay to open back up. Even if it had been welded shut, it might have opened back up. The other possibility is that it actually was working fine and I just never heard the clicking. So it could be that maybe this relay is not as loud as some of the other ones I'm used to and I just never did hear it clicking and unclicking as I was energizing the pedal. So I will look into that further once we get it going, but I'm not going to order this relay yet after all because I haven't confirmed that it's actually bad. So the next thing I want to do is check these brakes. When I was test driving it out, I noticed that the brakes didn't seem real good. I think one side was starting to stop, but the other wheel didn't seem to have any brakes at all and it was causing it to slide. It was not very good at stopping and it felt pretty uncontrollable. That's one of the things I definitely want to check since I've got everything apart and accessible. Might as well see if we need new pads or if they're just out of adjustment and need freeing up, which it's been sitting a while. There's a very good chance that's the case. Okay, inside of the drum, looks pretty good. Actually not too much surface rust. I was expecting a lot more and I don't see any real ridge 
maybe just the faintest of a ridge right here between the polished and the rough edge. That tells you how much wear this drum has had. Uh, in this case, very, very little. And our pads actually have quite a bit of pad as well. So this may have been the side that is working or it may need some adjusting. And it looks like everything's freed up in there. There is a star adjuster down here, but springs look good. I'd say they've actually been replaced at some point because um, they look better than I, better than I would have thought. Okay, these ones are loosened back up and I'm just looking at the way these adjusters work. Once I have it loosened all the way up, I can actually tighten it up again with just every time I move the brake lever, it clicks forward. So these are self-adjusting and it will tighten itself back up until it's where it needs to be. So we just gotta get this back on. about where we want it. It should continue to tighten up on its own as they wear down. Okay. And this one, we're missing a cotter pin on our axle nut, so we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Okay, so there it's turning freely and right off. And this one, drum looks really good. Still very, very little wear on the drum. There's still good life in them. I suspect this one may not be advancing. Yep, okay, so here we can see the problem. Here's why this side is not working. When I pull the brake lever, you can see the metal flap there. Let's see if I can zoom this where you can see it a little better. Try to get it to focus. When I pull the brake lever, it's supposed to engage that next star, and that's not happening. The next tooth on this star, and it should then continue to index, but it's not doing that. So I need to take a look at it. The cable itself wasn't giving me enough play to do it from here in the back. Now I can. So I think what happened is I had a sticky point in our cable that we just worked loose. So now it appears like it's working again. Let's go ahead and put it back together and test it. Lots and lots of movement. Oh, it's already locking up, yep. And I'm feeling some resistance, so I think we're good there. If you do a lot of work on this kind of stuff, it's really good to get an assortment of cotter pins because a lot of times you can reuse them, but you're really not supposed to. The more, it's just like anything, it's a soft metal. You bend it too many times and eventually it'll just bend and break. Getting a nice assortment kind of lets you pick and see. You find a size that fits. You're putting new pins on everything as you, as you work on it, it does two things. It gives you peace of mind that that's not gonna break on you. It, it's really worth the small cost, just at the ease of putting in the new one. You're not fighting the bent up one, trying to get it back in there.
Thank you.